Now, a natural question that may come up after thinking about these previous videos and thinking about the different categories and classes of data encoding, integers, characters, and floating point numbers, if, you, if, if it's understood that everything is just a bunch of zeros and ones, and that's all the computer has, then how does the computer know which of its data encodings to use? Let's say you have a sequence of, of 16 bits. Let's say you've got 1100, zero, 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 one, one, zero. there's 8, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, 1, and is that 16? Did I get it right? 1, 2, yeah. So here's 16 bits of information. One encoding of this could be as a uint 16, right? So we could take all of it as one and call it a uint 16. At the same time, we could take the same string of sequence of zeros and ones and break it up instead into two uint 8s. One uint 8 here and another after it. And there'd just be two numbers that go up to 256, or one number that goes up to 65535. 255, right? Um, or we could say, well, that's not right either. We want to encode this instead as two ASCII strings, two ASCII characters. And so you could say, okay, I got this one, and I got this one. And we go and look up at the table, and this is, you know, one, um, one ASCII character. I could look it up what it is, but uh, it's not that interesting. And another ASCII character. And that would give us two letters in the alphabet, or two numbers, or whatever is encoded by those two 8-bit strings. Or we could say, you know what, that's not right either. This is actually, this is actually a single UTF-16 character, or half of a single floating point number, or half of a, a UTF-32 character. The problem is, the question is, which of these is it? Which data encoding is this sequence of ones and zeros? Well, the answer is actually quite rhetorical, because there is no right answer. All of these could be true. And this, herein lies one of the key insights about data encoding, is that the computer has no idea, by itself, how to encode a set of ones and zeros. Because the computer, like I said in the very first video introducing all this, does not decide what is data. The computer has no idea of value. There's no such thing. It simply applies an encoding and translates whatever information is stored in memory, in disk drive, that gets sent down from the internet, whatever it is. So absent additional pieces of information and structure to inform the computer how to interpret a set of data, it is powerless to get it right. It can apply any arbitrary set of encodings and present you with something that looks like utter gibberish, or present you with meaningful information, that, something that looks like actual data to you. You have no idea. I mean, the computer has no idea. You have to tell it. You have to provide additional ones and zeros around this data in places that it knows where to look to tell it what type of encoding to use. This is commonly considered called a data format, right, or a file format. A file is nothing other than a series of ones and zeros in a particular structure such that the computer, that's a, a computer program that's opening that file knows exactly where to look to figure out the things that tell it what to do with the data that's in there. And without these types of file formats that explain how the sequence of ones and zeros um, should be encoded or decoded, there's no way for a computer to figure it out. It can guess or you can go in and say, you know what, I actually know what this should be. Go in and look at it this way. And the computer will happily comply. So 
you could take these two u and 8s and actually ask the computer, yeah, yeah, I know these are u and 8s, but I actually want you to view them as a single u and 16 and give me that number. It'll do it, right? This is called typecasting. And it's very commonly done in programming. There's fundamentally nothing stopping the computer from doing that. It's all just ones and zeros. If you, the person who knows what's going on, right, the person who controls value, right, the person who dictates what is and is not data, asks the computer to encode it or decode it a different way, it'll happily do so. Most of the time, if in non-programming settings, these are all hidden away from you. These are all abstracted away in things like file extensions and file formats that you sort of hide all the internals of this so that you don't see what's going on. But this is very core to the way computers work. And without encoding models, these ones and zeros aren't data at all. They're just gibberish. We create structure in them, structure to the ones and zeros, so that our computers can interpret them the right way. And that's actually pretty cool, right? It's a, it's a nice, very satisfying sort of result because there's really no other way it could be because the computer itself doesn't understand anything. The computer has no meaning and cannot attribute meaning by itself. Everything the computer does is instructed by us. We, we, uh, we deliver meaning to the ones and zeros. We provide the encoding formats. We dictate what is important. And when you are, are operating in that modality, it's a much more powerful perspective because it puts you, the user, in charge of the system. It gives you a lot of, of uh, authority to dictate what the computer should do. That's fundamentally what you're always doing. It just might be a little more passive when things don't work because of some error. But at the end of the day, in programming in particular, you're in control of the data. And the computer's just shuffling ones and zeros around. It's doing so at your request. And the better you understand this concept of the way data is encoded and what the different types of data encodings are, the more confident you'll feel and the more empowered you'll be to shuffle it around in the way that you want without ever compromising data or losing it or misplacing it or casting it in a wrong way.